Hello, have you always wondered what the arch in St. Louis was really about? Well, if the answer is yes, keep watching to learn more about it. If you're new here, my channel is about product development within the electronic, computer, and mechanical space, encouraging inexperienced tech users and makers to complete projects independently. If you have been enjoying or this is your first time here, Please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification button for a continuous reminder of an upload. Well, of course, they needed a place to put the arch. The arch was constructed in St. Louis, Missouri. The arch is well known as the gateway to the West. Before the construction, local business leaders promoted the idea of a memorial to Thomas Jefferson and the expansion of the West after the Louisiana Purchase. But their real aim, according to Tracy Campbell, author of the Gateway Arch, a biography, was to get rid of the city's waterfront of blighted property and bring in federal construction dollars. While reading more articles in 1939, the city of St. Louis began clearing 400 in 86 buildings from the area near its riverfront. Most of these buildings housed businesses owned and ran by black St. Louisianans, which equated to about 5,000 jobs lost. The arch was designed by Iro Serenian. He had won the 1947 competition for the design. It was constructed between 1963 and 1965. During the construction of the site, employment was offered to some individuals and Black Americans were barred from working on the site. The Gateway Arch officially opened on 1965. The arch two legs were built separately. If their measurements were off by a little of a, of a slight of an inch, they would not have been able to join at the top. The stainless steel pieces of the arch were shipped in by a train from Pennsylvania and had to be assembled on site. Welders had to work extraordinarily carefully to ensure their measurements were precise. The margin of error allowed was less than half a millimeter. Though the construction workers were sure of their product, many people speculated that the arch would fail when the last piece at the top of the arch was set in place to join the two legs. But it didn't, of course. It was reported that there was zero reported deaths. The arch is 630 feet tall, and the distance between its two legs is equal to its height, meaning the width is also 630 feet. Inside of the arch are two trams each of which consists of eight cars that each carry up to five seated people at a time. The tram is part elevator and part Ferris wheel. Visitors can take a four minute tram ride to the viewing platform at the top of the arch. 16 windows face east and the same number face west for views of the city, river and the surrounding land. At the base of the arch, the Museum of Westward Expansion features displays showing what life was like in the 1800s, as well as exhibits on the construction of the arch. The museum has six interactive galleries. The Colonial St. Louis Gallery uncovers the discovery of founding of St. Louis in 1764 and how it came to be. The Jefferson's Vision Gallery tells the colonization stories of the West and how it was built from after Lewis and Clark's expedition. The other galleries are called the Manifest Destiny, the Riverfront Era, New Frontiers, and the Building the Arch. The park also includes the old courthouse where Dred Scott and his wife Harriet Scott filed suit for their freedom. The first suit occurred in 1847 and then another one later in 1850, 
for his freedom in a legal case that would go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Seven of the nine judges of the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that not only was Dred Scott a slave, but that as a slave, Scott had no right to bring suits in the federal courts on any matter. Thank you for joining me in this Global Engineer Travel Series to the Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. Continue to watch some of my photos from visiting the park and monument. Please write a comment below about an interesting fact about this place.